So I'm going to talk a little bit about dehydrating. Um, this is one of my dehydrator trays. I used to have a stacking one which was made of plastic, just an off-browned, um, had a temperature control and a timer. Um, it was one of the rectangular ones because I feel personally that the circular ones take up a bit too much space. Uh, they don't offer as much drying space as the rectangular ones. Um, however, one thing I did find with mine was the two corners at the sides would get much hotter than the rest of it so that it would dry very unevenly, even turning the trays throughout the process, those two corners would need rearranging so I'd have to go in and rearrange the stuff on the trays. And it was a little bit of a palaver, not that I minded, um, terrifically. These are the ones in my new dehydrator which I'm utterly in love with, I have to say. These are obviously, these trays are metal, that's the actual tray itself, which is nice. They're thinner, they take up less space, they're simpler to clean. You can just whack those in the dishwasher without worrying too much about them leaching any flavour from the soap or anything like that. Um, one, one thing I do do, whichever dehydrator I'm using, is I use some of these, I think they're just generic Teflon mesh baking sheets. And that just stops anything from sticking to the trays there. I find those really, really useful. You can cut them to size. I used ones with my other dehydrator, which had a, a great big hole in the middle. Um, you know, so you can you can cut them to shape and size, and they work really, really well to stop anything sticking. So here we have the dehydrator that I use. I used to have a stacking one, um, but I purchased this a few months back and I don't think I'd ever go back. I have to say this is one with a rear fan. It's got a temperature control and a timer there. Temperature control and timer, which is perfect. It's got a little clip. If I just pull it forwards there, it's got a little clip at the side that we can undo. I like that it's got a nice big glass window so I can see what's going on. It's got metal trays, which I prefer to the plastic ones. They're a little bit easier to wash. They take up a bit of less space. I'm not worried about flavors leaching in. As you can see, I've got a couple of leathers in there at the moment, just finishing off. It's got a little drip tray at the bottom there to catch anything. It's nice, simply designed, easy to clean. So that. The things I prefer personally like to save. I like to preserve the things that you get a lot of suddenly. Um, so I have a neighbour who has a lot of apple trees and every year she puts out giant buckets of apples at the front of her house and they're delicious but you can never keep them long enough. Um, so what we do is she gives these out for free which is very kind of her. What we also do is we offer to go down and pick and help her pick the trees um, and while we do that we get a nice few bags of apples now these are my favorites right, if you can see the color on these nice and rosy and pink and you can just see the blush there now we think these are discovery apples but we're not sure but they are delicious and they make a beautiful pink apple sauce as well um, when I'm making apple sauce I do mix Apples, I generally use cooking apples and eating apples. I just find it makes a nicer balance of taste. So those are good. Obviously when they're freshly done, they do snap. They do go a little bit bendy in storage. I mean, these are from last year. So these have been in here for a long time. Obviously I've got no moisture absorber or anything like that. They're perfectly dry and well stored and I've got no worries about those whatsoever. As you can tell, the frugal part of me shows through. I have another neighbour who drinks an awful lot of coffee and she very kindly donates me these coffee jars, which although they are slightly the wrong size for my cupboard, they are free and they are very good for storing my dried foods, I've found. Now, alongside the apples, I use one of these thingamajigs. Just like an, a cora and a peeler and a slicer 
all in one. It's very simple to use and incredibly effective. It saves so much time. I use this for everything, whether I'm making apple crumble, apple pie, apple sauce, anything I'm using apples in, I run them through that. It's so much easier than peeling each one individually by hand and coring them and chopping them. It's perfect and they come out, as you can see, the perfect thickness to make apple chips. One of the side effects is you get a lot of peel and you get these lovely long laces of peel that come off. Obviously they're dry so they just snap now. One of the things my children like to do is sit at the far end of the apple peeler and just eat the peel as it comes off. It's often hard enough, hard to get enough to save there. So that's the peel. Again, I ran out of time and energy on that day, so I've just put that in the jar as is. What I do do is I turn that into powder as well. And then that is then useful for throwing in various things. Like muesli, I tend to put spoonfuls of this in the big muesli bit mixes, anything like that. Any crumbles, baby food, anything. It's so versatile, it's so useful. And to me, it's worth doing because it's a thing I'm acquiring anyway. I'm not going to a great effort to go and get apple peels. I'm not spending a lot of money on it, but it's goodness that I can find and save frugally, which I like. So tomatoes is another thing. Um, this is mostly skin, skin and seeds in this powder. Uh, simply because when I'm processing the tomatoes anyway, most things call for peeling them when you're canning. So I just, once I've taken the peels off, run them through the dehydrator, um, which I think you saw in another video. I will try and find a little bit that I can insert. And that makes a really lovely seasoning. Um, also, if you've ever had any kind of tomato flavoured crisps, you know, the kind of 20, 23p tomato jobbies in the corner shop, this tastes just like that to me. I love it. You can add it to thicken soup sauces, anything like that. Very, very tasty. Here I have a load of strawberry chops. Now we've got these already all dried and ready for powdering when I've got time. Obviously I didn't have time that day, so I've got them out of the dehydrator. Apologies for the uh, dishwasher. So I've got them out of the dehydrator as is, and I will powder those when I've got time then. So alongside the strawberries and the jam and the powder, I like to dry a load of slices for my muesli as well. Obviously I love eating fresh strawberries in my muesli in the season, but off season, these things are perfect. You can just rip them apart if you want them smaller or we'll whack them in as they are and it gives a lovely fruity burst to your breakfast. So again a video the other day, I don't know if you saw me make this strawberry powder, um, so when I'm doing a big batch of jam or dehydrating, strawberry is something I go out and get. I can never seem to grow enough, the birds just get it every time, but we love strawberry jam in this house. So what we do is every year we go to a big pick your own farm, uh, which is not the cheapest way of doing it, but it is a lovely day out for the kids and they get to stuff their faces <laughs> all the way around. So I'm sure the cost works out in the end. So that's all the tops from where I've topped the strawberries while I was chopping them for the jam. Again, just quite quickly, bash them out on the dehydrator sheets, stick it in, abandon it for a day or so, and then run it through a mill. Easy. And again, you can sneak that in, you can use that in yogurts, you can put that on muesli, anything you can think of. Ice cream, cream, kids' school yogurts. One thing I also do every year is I do blueberries because my kids love blueberries. What I tend to do with these is I use an old tomato trick that you find in those hacks videos online, which is just to press two Tupperware lids together and run a knife in between to cut cherry tomatoes in half. 
works perfectly with blueberries. They take a third of the time to dry, which is ideal than if you just pricked a hole in them. And again, just appears to the fruit, appeals to the frugality in me. Because you get twice as much. And they're still perfectly, perfectly tasty. Again, these are from last year. This is all I've got left now. I'm going to have to get some more. Although I have to admit, those were just from little, I think, when they were on offer. <laughs> so, one thing I also get when it's cheap. This is another one of our favourite things to dehydrate alongside the mango. Although, as you can see, that's it now. It's pineapple. Which comes out nice and chewy. And tasty. I love this stuff. It's so fresh and delicious. So here we've got some dried mango, which is one of my absolute favourites. Um, I get as many as I can at a time when they've got them really cheap in the supermarkets. As you can see, they're nice and chewy. And they're really, really tasty. Um, another way I cut them, that's slightly thinner, I think, than some you find in the shop. But I prefer it that way. It makes it go a little further and it's still got a nice bite to it without being too much in one go. So we go through a lot of that. Now these are, I do cheat with these, but my son absolutely adores them, so it's worthwhile. Grapefruit segments. I do use tinned for this because, frankly, life's too short to peel each segment. I did try doing them myself, but I just found them dry and unpleasant and papery on the outside. Um, they do really need to be skinned and have that membrane layer taken off. So I use canned, which is a cheat, but it's also fairly cheap and tasty. So another thing I use them for, my dehydrator for, is wild garlic. Now I go out every year and we do a big pick of wild garlic. Again, it's free, it's everywhere. As long as you know what you're picking and you're confident that it's safe, that makes a really good seasoning, or you can just sneak it into things if you've got children who are fussy about vegetables. Throw a spoonful of this into any meal you cook, they will never know. And it's full of good. So that's powdered. Um, so you can use a coffee grinder gives the finest powders. Um, you can use a Vitamix and Nutribullet. Anything that will bash it up, really. So there's that. That's after doing. This is a jar that I dehydrated and I did not have time to powder straight away. So I've stuffed that in a jar, look, and I will go around to powdering that at some point, or I could rehydrate it and use it as is, but I don't think it would be terribly pleasant. So that's always an option as well. If you don't have time to do everything in one go, you can spread it out a little bit. I do also have some generic greens powder. Now this is generally anything um, from the garden. This is chard, it's perpetual spinach, wild garlic, anything really that I can put in there, I do. That's ideal for just, again, chucking a spoonful into whatever you're cooking. If you've got fussy children, that gets goodness into them without them knowing. I've also got a jar of celery here. Now this was, if I'm honest, one packet of celery that was going a little a little limp in the fridge. Um, I'm terrible at remembering to buy, buy celery. Um, I've recently bought some seeds for some of the leafy variety, so we'll see how that comes out. But that is, I've just run that through the food processor to chop it up, laid it out on some sheets in the dehydrator and dried it. I could powder it if I wish, but We just use that like the now that's perfect for throwing a handful into soups or stews anything you'd use fresh celery for if it's going to be cooked for a little while that's ideal or you can mix it with salt grind it up a little more or you can grind it up on your on its own and use it as a seasoning as is 
One of the things I probably do most with a dehydrator, the kids love it, is fruit leathers. Now these are delicious and in this case entirely free, um, thanks to my lovely neighbour and her apples. And as you can see, that's nice and thick and bendy. It's like the fruit winders you get in your school lunch boxes, but it's got no sugar or anything else. That's just apple juice, um, apple sauce, sorry. And in this case, it's um, some cranberry as well that I've thrown in because um, I had some spare cranberry sauce and I thought it would be tasty. And it is, and the kids can't get enough of these. So we go through a lot of these but it's so simple making it in the dehydrator, which I have done another video on, which I will put in the links underneath. So one thing you can also do is a little meal in a jar. Um, this works really well. I've done baby food um, when the kids were small, which is fantastic. I pureed loads of apple and vegetables, ran them through the dehydrator to powder them and then all you had to do is add some hot water, leave to sit for a while, and you've got easy, dry baby food. Um, you can also do this with soups, basically anything that you can get to stay on a dehydrator sheet. Um, you can powder and rehydrate as needed. Obviously it works better with pureed foods, with soups, things where the texture isn't such an issue. Um, then that works really well. I also dry herbs from the garden. Now I don't use a dehydrator for these actually I tend to just hang them up um, in my utility room. It's fairly hot and fairly dry and I find the results a little bit better. I find it's just unnecessary to put them through the dehydrator and use the electricity if I don't have to. Um, so I don't put those through the dehydrator as I don't feel it's necessary personally. Now, as with any um, food preservation, there are things you can't do and things that aren't worth doing. Now, if I was to grow the amount of garlic we use in a year, I would need a field the size of Birmingham. So I do tend to buy things like garlic powder. It's not stuff that I often have around um, in bulk suddenly that needs dealing with. So I use the garlic and I don't generally have enough left over to make things like this, but I do use it. So I buy this in bulk and store this. Um, so that's an example of a thing that for me personally would not be worth doing. Um, there are other things that you can't do, such as avocado you can't do because it's got too high fat content. Any kind of fat is going to impede drying and go rancid in storage. Um, so that's not a thing that can be done. Dairies and eggs also can be dangerous, so that is best avoided. If you do find you need that, you can buy commercially produced dried products that have been done to a better standard than we can achieve at home. Now, this isn't dehydration. This is just dry storage. Now, I've vacuum sealed these jars using a food saver jobby with a jar attachment is very useful as you can see that's quite full is it azuki beans and harico i use a lot of these um actually the reason i got these this time is one of my local shops was closing down and selling off all of its dried stocks and beans so i picked up a few bags so i've now got a nice cupboard full of these which are perfect then i can just pop and can a whole lot um, from memory I think I weighed them at the time and these take about 750 grams of beans um, although I will have to check my book which is perfect because that's about a can of load of baked beans there so I can just pop that soak them and can them simple and they store nicely and securely and nothing can get at them because they're in glass. If you're interested in the vacuum sealing, I will be doing another video. I've got a load of black beans that I need to vacuum seal actually, so I will be doing that as well. As usual, if you've got any questions or anything like that, please do drop me a line, um, send me a message. I will try and do the best I can 
to answer anything and to try and yeah what, what I'm saying there so if you're interested in food preservation if you're based in the UK wherever you are it's useful for everybody um, please subscribe let me know what you like to hear so these are the things that are most useful to me obviously that's going to change from person to person from household to household but this is the way I like to preserve I like to preserve the things that I can that are worthwhile to my mind to do I could run out I could buy 10 tons of raspberries for anything like that and dry it just to have it um, but I prefer to do the stuff that is either going to be wasted otherwise is very heavily used I eat a lot of muesli fruits for muesli are perfect and it means that I can buy the less interesting packs of muesli and granola and add what I like to them without having to worry Okay, have a good day.